Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I've had a few requests on the Starburst Crochet Granny Square, so we're gonna be making that in today's tutorial. So this block is really fun. It's very versatile. You can put this block into any pattern that calls for crocheted granny squares. I use this block for an afghan. We used white, yellow, and pink for my daughter, and it looks like daisies or sunflowers. It's really cute. I've also put it into a crochet tote. I will be sharing my finished projects a little bit later on in this video, but for now, let's go ahead and dive into today's tutorial. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this cute sunburst crochet granny square. And to give you a little inspiration or motivation, I wanted to show you a finished project of what I've used these squares for. This is a cute little crochet tote bag. And I followed my tutorial for my original granny squares that we did here on YouTube. And I followed the tutorial on how to make that tote bag. I just used the um, sunburst squares instead of the regular granny squares. And then as you can see here on camera, this bag is actually quite a bit larger than my granny square bag. and that is just because of the yarn size and the hook size. So this yarn that I used, I believe it was maybe a four or maybe even a five weight yarn. So it's a chunkier yarn and I used a larger hook size. As you can see, the different size yarn obviously yields a totally different size bag, but the tutorial is exactly the same. So I will make sure to link the tutorial for this bag below. And if you haven't already done my tutorial for these granny squares, I actually recommend starting there and then you can come back and do this sunburst block. And I will link all of that below as well. So for this project, you're gonna need some yarn. I am gonna be using this Chunky Thread by Lori Holt is what it's called. It's actually a two weight yarn. So it's almost a fingering weight yarn. It's pretty thin. I'm also gonna be using a size G crochet hook. This is just my Clover Amour uh, crochet hooks. These are my favorite. And you're just gonna to wanna to use your hook size that coordinates with your yarn weight. And that should be on the back of your yarn ball. You're also gonna need a yarn needle. This one is a Clover yarn needle. It's perfect for weaving in ends. It has a little bit of a bent tip there. This is my favorite. You'll need a small pair of scissors, and then if you're older like me, you might wanna grab a pair of reading glasses. I'll make sure to link all these supplies in the description box below the video. Let's go ahead and get started on our tutorial. So we're gonna be starting off by making this center section right here. And so you're gonna take your yarn and you're just gonna do a slip knot, and a slip knot just means you do a little loop like that. And then I just pull my tail up through that loop and tighten it, and then you can put that loop on your hook and you're ready to go. We're gonna start off by chaining four, and a chain is just a yarn over. I like to hang on to the yarn with these fingers and then grab my tail with these so that I can pull it through. And you're just gonna pull it through, and that's one chain. Yarn over, chain another, that's two. Yarn over, chain another three, yarn over, chain another four. And so you have these four little crochet chains on your hook. Now we're gonna make these into a little circle so that we have something to use for our center. And yes, you can use a magic loop for this. I just don't like to do that method. So this is how I do it. But if you prefer magic loop, go ahead and do that. The next thing we're gonna do is put our hook into that first chain on there. I'm going to yarn over and then I'm going to pull that through so what you've done is created a little circle just like that for yourself. And we're gonna be working into the center of this circle for all of these next stitches. Now we're going to chain three. So yarn over and pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through three. And this first chain three is going to count as a double crochet. And these are US terms, by the way. So we're gonna be working 15 more double crochets into the center of this circle. So right here, right into the middle of our circle, we're gonna be working these, and we are going to be working over the top of our tail. So don't let this tail scare you. We're just gonna be going right over the top of it, and that'll kind of weave it in for us. So to do a double crochet, we're going to yarn over. We're going to insert our hook into the center of that circle, so make sure you're in the center and not in one of the stitches. And we're going to pull up a loop. So now we have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over, we're gonna pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So that is one of our 15 that we have to do. We need 16 total. This first one, like I said, is going to count as our first double crochet. So technically we have two. So yarn over, go into the center of your circle, pull up a loop. And I like to hold my tail with my loop. That way, as I'm doing these yarn overs, I'm catching my tail in there. If you don't or your tail doesn't get caught in, don't worry, you can always weave it in later. So we've got three loops on our hook. Again, yarn over, pull through two, 
yarn over, pull through two. And that pulling through twice is what makes the double. All right, so we've got two of our 15. We need another one, yarn over. Again, make sure your tail is getting caught in this. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna do that until we have 15 more or 16 total if you wanna count our first chain. So yarn over, go through the middle, pull through up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go into the middle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And I think you can really see now we're weaving over our tail here. So we're just gonna keep going until I've got a total of 15 more on my circle. If you need to go back and rewind or slow down this video, you can do that using the little gear icon. You can slow it down or speed it up. All right, so let's take a look. We've got our first chain, which chain three, which counts as one of our double crochets. And then each one of these little posts is a double crochet. So we've got our first chain. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And I just need one more. Now we're gonna join these with a slip stitch. So you're just gonna go into the top of your chain three that you did. So here's one, two, three chains. I'm just gonna go into that top stitch like that. We're gonna yarn over and pull through all the loops on our hook to join those with a slip stitch. And now we have our cute little circle here. Now, because I'm gonna do a new color, I will be cutting this off and joining a new color. If you would like to continue on with the same color, you're just going to chain two, and then you're gonna follow along with the rest of the video, as I'll be showing when I change color. But I am going to go ahead and cut this off. So I'm gonna yarn over and just pull my yarn through a bit, take my scissors and just snip it off, and pull that through. And I'm just gonna tighten that. And now for these blocks, I actually do like to weave in my ends as I go because it gets kind of finicky to have so many ends. So I'll show you how on this first round, I'm not gonna weave them in on every round because I do it the exact same way, but just so that you know. I've turned it over to the back side. My front side, as you can see, looks a little prettier. You've got that ridge of stitches around. That's my front side. The back side looks like the back side. The stitches are just a little bit flatter and not quite as pretty. So I'm turning it over to the back side and then I'm just picking some loops to tuck that into. And then I'm actually going to join it up with this other one that is hanging out right here. So I've got two together. Cut that off so they're the same length. You'll see why in a second, it just makes it life a little easier. I'm gonna put both of them on my needle now. And now because this one was coming this way, I'm actually gonna go the opposite direction, but I'm going to skip over that first loop. Okay, so it's coming out right here. I'm skipping over that first loop so it'll catch it when I go back the other way. And I'm just gonna drag it through there. And as you can see, it catches it. I'm gonna go around maybe a couple of times like that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm actually gonna skip this first stitch and go backwards on itself through some of these stitches. And as you can see there, when I pull it, that stitch right there prevents it from just pulling all the way out. And you can just do that a couple times and then your ends will be nice and secure and you can just cut those off and now they'll be out of our way. Okay, so here is our little center flower. We should have 16 posts all the way around. Before you weave in your ends and cut it off, do the counting and just make sure you have the right amount. That's gonna save you um, some grief later on. Now we're gonna be moving on to our next round, which is this puffy stitch. It looks complicated, but it's not. So just pick your next color. I am going to go with my pink and this is peony, or frosting, sorry. And we're gonna be working a puff stitch into every stitch around the circle. And these two little V units are one stitch. So they almost look like they're in between the posts. I like to start right here on my stitch because this join stitch is weird. You've got that little knot on there. 
So I actually like to start there because it's easier for me to my, see my stitches all the way around. But you can start in any stitch around your edge. So to join our new color, we're just going to stick our hook through one of those stitches. I'm going to lay the yarn on top of my hook just like that. And then I'm just gonna pull it through that stitch. So we've pulled up our loop. Now we need to chain two. So we're just gonna yarn over, go through once, and two, and that's gonna give us our height for our puff stitch. Now to do the puff stitch, the key is gonna be kind of pulling it tall. If you don't pull it tall, you'll have a short little squatty puff, which is also okay. Just be consistent on your blocks. So we're gonna yarn over. We're gonna go back into that same stitch that we went into to start. Yarn over and pull up a loop, and you're gonna tug on that stitch to pull it up just like that. You wanna pull it up to the same height as your chain two. So now we have three loops. We're gonna do that two more times. So yarn over, go through the same stitch. We're working all of these into the same stitch. And I am trying to catch my tail in this, by the way. Yarn over and pull up another loop. Again, pull it up nice and tall. So now we have five. One more time, yarn over, go through that same stitch, pull up a loop, pull it up. And now we've got seven loops on our hook. You're gonna yarn over, and pull through all seven loops and that's gonna make your little puffy puff stitch. And now to seal it off so these don't just all go sliding off, we're going to just chain one. So yarn over and chain. And that chain is gonna keep your little puff stitch together. And you can see that however tall I pulled that up, that's how big my puff is gonna be. We're gonna be doing one of those puff stitches in every single stitch all the way around this center circle. So again, our next stitch is gonna be right here. It's that little V right there. Okay, so we're going to yarn over, go into our stitch, pull up a loop, and again, pull it up nice and tall. Yarn over, we need to do it three times. That's two, and one more, all in the same stitch, that's three. And we can tell because we should have seven loops on our hook. Again, yarn over, pull through all seven loops, and then chain one to finish off your little puff. And there we've got our next puff, okay? So we're gonna do that in each stitch all the way around. And this yarn is a little bit thinner, so my puffs aren't as puffy as my sample, but I did want you to be able to see these stitches. So one, two, three. Yarn over, pull through all seven. Pull up one, pull up two, pull up three. Seven loops, yarn over, pull through all seven and chain one. Okay, and we're going to continue doing that in every stitch all the way around our center circle. We've worked our way all the way around and we have one more stitch to go in here. So one more, yarn over, pull up one, two, three, Join them all with a slip stitch and chain one. So we've got all of our puff stitches made and I like to just count to make sure there should be 16 of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And now we're going to join this, but instead of joining at the top of your first stitch like you normally do, we're actually gonna skip this entire first puff and we're gonna join in this space right here on the other side of that first puff. So just take your hook, skip over this entire puff and go into that space after the first one. We're going to do a slip stitch now, so just pull through your loop and pull through your loop and that's gonna complete it and keep those that ending and beginning puff close together. Now we're going to just chain one, cut our yarn, and pull that through to tighten. And I am going to weave in this end. I like to weave in as I go. You don't have to do this, but I just think it's easier. So for our next round, we're gonna be doing cluster stitches and we're gonna be working them into the spaces in between our little puffs. So we're gonna take our hook and just pick a space, any space, put your hook through. We're just gonna again, lay our yarn over the top of that hook and just pull it through like that. And now we're gonna chain two. And so I like to yarn over both of those and pull it through. Then I'm gonna drop my tail and now I have my working yarn. I can yarn over and do my second chain. Now we're gonna leave this on our hook just like this. We're gonna yarn over and go into that same space. 
pull up a loop, and we're going to pull through two, and then stop. So now we have two loops on our hook. We're gonna do that again. Yarn over, go into that same space, pull up a loop. Now you've got four. We're gonna yarn over and again, just pull through two and stop. So now we have three, we need one more. So again, we're gonna yarn over, go into our space, pull up a loop, yarn over, and just pull through two. So now we've got four on our hook. And we're gonna be doing this into each space. So for this first round, you've got your chain two, and then you've got three half completed double crochets sitting on your loop. We're going to now yarn over and pull through all four of those loops to complete our first cluster. And then we're going to chain two, one, two. So that's our first one completed. We're gonna be doing that in each space all the way around. We're gonna be doing the four double crochets together in each space. So to do the next one, we're just gonna yarn over. We're gonna go into the next space between our next two puff stitches, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then again, stop. We're gonna do that three more times so that we have four of these posts. So yarn over, pull through a loop, yarn over, pull through two, stop. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. We need one more. We've got three half completed double crochets. We need one more, so yarn over, go into that space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now for all the rest of the clusters all the way around, we'll have five loops on our hook. So one, two, three, four, five. Yarn over, pull through all five, and then chain two. One, two. And we're gonna do that all the way around, and that's gonna create this cute little cluster that's gonna look like our flower. So in our next stitch, we're just finding our next space. We're gonna yarn over, go into that space, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. Yarn over, pull through up a loop, pull through two, stop. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. That's one, two, three, we need one more. Pull up a loop, pull through two, stop. We should have five loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through all five, and chain two, one, two. And again, we're gonna do that same thing in each space all the way around. And I think the hardest part about this is stopping right here and not completing off that double crochet, especially if you've crocheted before. It's kind of a habit to wanna finish that stitch off, but we're just doing them halfway and then joining them all at the end. So again, five loops. To help you count, you can see you've got one, two, three, four posts there. Five loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all five, chain two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that in each of these spaces all the way around. And then I will meet you back here when I get all of my clusters done. So here, we are done with all of our cluster stitches. Again, I like to go back around and just count. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're good to go. And much like the last round, we're going to slip stitch in the space to the left of our initial cluster. So you're just gonna skip over that cluster, go into that space, pull through your loop, and pull through your loop to join that round. Chain one, clip your yarn, and then just pull that yarn through. Tighten it, and then weave in your ends on the back side. So for this next round, we're going to be working again in between our spaces, so that's nice and easy, but each section is gonna be a little different. So just stick with me. I will also make sure to write it here on the screen to help you out. So for your first one, again, we're going to just find a space, stick our hook through that space, pull the yarn through, yarn over both of those strands and pull them through to lock that tail in and now we can drop our tail. So for this first one we need to chain four. So we've chained one with our two yarns, we're gonna drop our tail, grab our yarn and we need three more. So one, two, and three. So we've got four chains and this is gonna count as our first treble crochet. We need two more treble crochets in this same space. So to do a treble crochet, you're going to yarn over twice. So you've got three loops. You're gonna go into that same space and pull up a loop 
yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we're pulling through three times, that's where the treble comes in. So now we've got our first chain four, one treble, we need one more treble. So yarn over twice, go into that same space, pull up a loop, again pull through three times. Pull through two, one, pull through two, and pull through two. Okay, so we're pulling through three times and we have our first treble crochet. This is actually gonna be one of our corners. So our corners are a little bit taller than our sides. And if we look at this sample, you can see our corners are a little bit larger and then we get smaller on our sides and then our corners are a little bit larger. And once we do our first side, I'll put up on the screen so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So in this next space, and I'm just gonna get my tail out of the way now, I will leave that in later. We're gonna be working into this next space with three double crochets. So we did three treble crochets, now we're gonna do three double. So yarn over once, go into that space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now we need two more. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So we need one more, we've got two, so we're gonna yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two. So we've got our first round, this is three treble crochets, three double crochets. Now in this next space, we're gonna be doing three half double crochets. And a half double crochet is yarn over, go into your loop, pull up a loop, and we're gonna pull through all three now, like that. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull up all three. And that basically is a double crochet, it's just a shortened version of it. So yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three. So we've got treble crochet, double crochet, half double crochet. Now we're gonna be working back up towards our next corner. So we're gonna do another set of three double crochets. So yarn over, go through into your next space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through two, pull through two, and that's our three double crochets completed. And now we're going to be in our next corner. So we're gonna do three double, or three treble crochets. So again, the treble is yarn over twice, pull up a loop, pull through two, two, two. That's one of them. We need to do another one, so yarn over twice. Go into that same space, pull up a loop, pull yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. We need one more. So yarn over twice, go into that same space, pull up a loop, pull through two, two, and two. All right, let's take a quick look at this, and I will Get my hook out of the way. And what we're doing is we're turning this circle into a square. So this is one side of our square. So we've got half of our corner with treble crochet and treble, three treble crochets in each corner. And then we've got three double crochets in each space next to the corner. And then we have three half double crochets in that center space. So that's what all of our sides are gonna look like. So now we're going to literally turn our circle slash square to the right, and we're gonna complete that same thing down this top edge. Now to do our corner so that it looks like a corner, we're going to chain two here, so one, two, and now we're ready to start our next side. So we're gonna do three treble crochets in this same corner space, three double crochets, three half double crochets, three double crochets, and then three treble crochets. And don't worry, I will write all this below. So to start that round, again, we're gonna do three treble crochets in this same corner space. So yarn over twice, go through into the same space, pull up a loop, pull through one, two, and three times. Yarn over twice, go through into that same corner, pull through one, pull through two, pull through three times. And each time you're pulling through two loops, again, Yarn over twice, pull up a loop, pull through once, twice, three times. And here we have created our corner. So our corner on each round is gonna consist of three treble crochets, 
a chain two, which makes a space here for our corner, and then three treble crochets. Now, just like our last round, our corner had three treble crochets. The next space is gonna have three double crochets. So yarn over once, go into your space, pull up a loop, pull through once, pull through twice. Yarn over, go into the space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through once, pull through twice, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through once, pull through twice. So now we've got three double crochets. Our next space, and this is our center space, is going to have three half double crochets. So again, yarn over like you're going to do the double crochet, go into that space, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. And we need three of those. So yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three. And that's three half double crochets. The next one is gonna be three double crochets. So yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through once, pull through twice. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through once, pull through twice. And each time you're pulling through two loops. We have one more to go, pull up a loop, through, pull through once and twice. All right, and now this next space right here is gonna be our next corner space. So again, we're gonna do three treble crochets. So yarn over twice, we're gonna do three treble crochets in here. So pull through once, twice, three times. We need two more, yarn over twice, pull through once, twice, three times, and we need one more. Pull up a loop, pull through once, twice, and three times. So again, you can see here, we've got our treble, our double, our half double, our double, our treble, and then if you remember to create this space here for our corner, which kind of makes our block square, we need to do a chain two, and then we'll turn our block and we'll do this same thing all down the next side. So we've got our three treble crochets, we need to chain two to make that corner space, and then three more treble crochets in that corner. So again, yarn over twice, pull through once, twice, three times. Yarn over twice, pull through once, twice, three times. Again, always pulling through two loops at a time. Pull through once, twice, three times. Now we've created our second corner. So we've got our first corner, our second corner, and don't forget the chain two right there in between your three treble crochets. That chain two is what makes this into a square. If you forget that, these will be combined and you'll have more of a rounded square. And then as before, we've got three treble. Our next one is three doubles. So yarn over, pull through once, twice, making it a double. Yarn over, pull through once, twice. Yarn over, pull through once, and Twice. Okay, our next one is our half double. So yarn over, pull through, pull through once, all three. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through all three. All right, so next we're going to do double crochets. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through twice. One, two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through twice. One, two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, pull through twice. And we're at our next corner. So again, our next corner right here is going to be three treble crochets, chain two, three treble crochets. So yarn over twice and pull through three times. One, two, three. All right, so there's our three treble crochets. To create our corner space, chain two and three treble crochets. And that's our corner completed. And now we've got three double crochets. This is our last side. So you probably have the pattern down now, but when I'm done, I'm gonna lay this block down and I'll put it on the screen to show you. So three double crochets, 
three half double crochets. Oops. One, two, three half double crochets and three double crochets. All right, and now here we are back to our start. We have only half of our corner done. So you'll notice that each corner has three treble crochets, chain two and three treble crochets. So we need to finish off this corner because we only have three treble crochets where we started. So I need to do three more treble crochets and then a chain two to finish off our corner. So yarn over twice. We're gonna go into this first corner where we started, pull up a loop, pull through three times. One, two, three. That's one treble crochet. We need two more, so yarn over twice, pull through three. One, two, three, yarn over twice, and pull through one, two, and three. So we've completed that corner, we just need to do our chain two to make that corner space. And then we're just gonna find the top chain here. We're gonna put our hook through that top chain and join with a slip stitch. So just pull through, pull through, and then chain one, trim your thread or yarn and pull through and finish it off. All right, let's take a quick look at our finished sunburst block. And I think you'll be able to recognize these stitches now that we've done it all. So this first corner right here is gonna be three treble crochets, chain two, three treble crochets. Next to those corners, so these two spaces right here, we've got three double crochets. And then in our center space, we have three half double crochets. And then here's our final corner with three treble crochets, chain two, three treble crochets. And just by looking at this one section right here, you can see how all of our sides are. So the centers have the half double crochets. Next to the centers are the double crochets. And then the corners are the treble crochets. And that's how we took our cute little circle here and turned it into a square. And that's it for this sunburst block. And now you can have all kinds of fun with this block. So it's been a few days and I finished my project and I did wanna share it with you. I'm also gonna share a couple other projects that you can do with these squares because you can put the sunburst squares in pretty much any granny square project you can think of. So I have finished this new tote and I do have a pattern available for this in my store. So this is just my sunburst tote. So this bag was really easy. I basically did three squares down and four across and then I added side and bottom panels. I also joined these using a single crochet so you can see that there's a little bit of a ridge between the squares and I thought it gave it a really fun texture. I lined it, let's see if I can show you the inside. I lined it with this cute pink fabric and then I used these Coco Knits handles for the handles on this bag. Now you could easily add a crochet handle, but I just thought that would be a fun addition and I think it turned out really cute. This is a great bag, it's a good library bag. You can put knit and crochet projects in it. You can take it on an airplane. It finishes at about 17 by 13. If because it's crochet, it's floppy, but if the side panels were a little bit sturdier, it would be about 17 by 13. You could also slide some cardboard along the bottom of this bag to give it a little bit extra structure as well, but I didn't care. I just wanted a soft, fun bag. Now that is also going to be dependent on the type of yarn you use. So if you're using a thicker or heavier weight yarn and a larger crochet hook, your bag would be even larger. So if you are doing that, that's totally fine. You might just wanna consider taking one of these rows out so it's not quite so wide. I think that would almost be like too large of a bag. This one is pretty good size. Here are the handles that I used. These are Coco Knits and it just says leather can handle kit. They also have another kit that have short straps. These are not the short strap kits. These straps are about 16 inches each. I think the short straps are like half that, so like eight inches somewhere in there. And I do have that on my granny star tote and that was really cute as well. But I wanted a little bit longer handles for these. You could easily add crochet handles as well. And I do have a tutorial on how to add crochet straps in my granny square tote as well if you wanna check that out. But I thought these would be a fun addition for this one.
Here's the granny square tote I'm referring to. You could also put those sunburst squares in this layout as well. And I do have a tutorial for that here on YouTube and I have a pattern for it in my store as well. So here's another fun option. And in this video, I show three different ways to join the squares. So as you can see in this one, I joined my squares so they're flat and you can't really see that seam at all. And then this one, I did the single crochet join so you have those ridges dividing your squares. You could also make them into a pillow and I have another video here on YouTube that shows how to make a granny square pillow. So definitely head over and check that if you're interested in doing a pillow. You could even make a ton of them and sew them into an afghan or my other thing that I was gonna do with these and I decided to do a bag. But the other thing you could do is make a cute granny square or sunburst square sweater. So a sweater or a little cardigan I think would be a lot of fun as well. And leave me in the comment in the comments below if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to do a cardigan. I I think that would be a lot of fun and I do have some more of these squares and I do need another project for them so that might be up next. I wanted to pop in really quick to show you one other fun thing that I've made using these sunburst squares and this will be a video coming soon as well. I had a request for a zipper pouch, a crochet zipper pouch and I thought you know what that's such a cute idea and it's perfect for these little squares so I did make this adorable little zipper pouch. It's fully lined. That video again will be coming soon. We've got cute pink lining in there. I used a double zipper for mine, but you can use whatever zipper that you want. And I just think it turned out so cute. In this video, I will also be showing you how to join your granny squares in a join as you go method. And I haven't done that yet here on this channel. So I thought it would be a great opportunity to learn something new and make a really cute project. I believe this pattern will actually already be listed for sale in my store. So if you prefer written patterns and you don't wanna wait for the video to release, you can get that already as well as the sunburst tote. You can get both of those in written format in my store or you can just follow the tutorials here on YouTube. I will put links to all the patterns I just mentioned below this video. You can also find them in my store at store.confessionsofahomeschooler.com and you'll find all of the options that I have available there. So that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. That really helps me out. You can also like this video and you can hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any upcoming fun. If you use this tutorial to make one of these squares, I would love to see your progress. So make sure to tag me at Erica Arndt on Instagram or Confessions of a Homeschooler on Facebook. And if you're not already, make sure to join our Sew With Me Facebook group. Everybody is sharing all of their fun projects there. And I will make sure to link that below this video. That's gonna be it for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Flower block, the outside, one for your center, one for your two different ones for your kind of flower. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make this crochet quilt block, er, quilt block. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erica. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make this granny square, did I miss one? And I do have a tutorial on how to add a handle like that on my granny square bag. My granny square tote. <laughs> Send that to Liv. That's funny. All right. I got to film this and I like literally can't.